Happy Monday and good morning, everyone. My name is Daniela Bloom, and I am here to share live with you some of my uncensored thoughts that have happened in the last week since I have come out as a Trump supporter. So this post, this video is actually dedicated to many of my friends um, who do not share my views, but are still um, in my world. Some of you got very triggered and you have inspired this session today. <laughs> okay, so I have been hesitating for quite some time to come out loud and proud as a moderate who will be voting for Trump. But we are in a wonderful country where we should not be afraid to support our sitting president and don an American flag that I could not take it anymore. I came out, so to say, loud and proud this week. Thank goodness I got the support of my parents and my family for the most part and many, many friends, but I got some angry emojis. I got some tear emojis. I got some nasty words and name calling from my friends on Facebook. Not all of you, but some of you. Now, mind you, this is a personal page and I welcome, I welcome different opinions. We can agree to respectfully disagree. This is how we grow. We can always learn from each other's perspectives because we all, after all, have the same human needs and desires and we actually are a lot more similar than we think. But simply calling people names because their actions have offended you and making it personal because you don't agree with what their opinions are, it's just not nice, it's not okay, it's rude. And I am here to talk about it. Actually, I'm doing more than talking about it. I, as many of you know, my big North Star has been Hollywood. And a lot of people have told me, don't mention anything that you're not anti-Trump because you will not work in, in, in that industry. And they're absolutely right. Um, Hollywood right now is completely biased and I have met, I can't even count a number of closet conservatives who know it is a career killer if people know their politics. We are in America, people. We are not in Russia. We are not in North Korea. How has this happened? But I want to actually share a little bit about my story because maybe some of you can relate. Many of you might not know this, but I actually uh, voted for Obama, not once, but twice, okay? I've always been more of an independent, usually center left leaning. I keep my mind open to all candidates. I remember when John McCain ran, I was very much a fan, but then he chose Sarah Palin as a running mate and I wasn't so impressed. Um, I was not a fan of Bush at all. I thought him going into Iraq had completely destabilized the entire Middle East. Um, and when Obama came around, I too had the audacity of hope. He was like, in my mind at that time, the second Martin Luther King. And if I didn't have a six month old, I would have been in Washington DC at his inauguration, uh, at the time over 12 years ago. Now, I don't feel that way now. And there's a reason. There's a reason why there is a huge movement of over 500,000 former Democrats who have moved to the hashtag walkaway movement. There is a reason why my favorite person at the moment, Candace Owens, has started the movement Blexit, which has inspired the movement Lexit, the Latino uh, uh, community, moving away from the Democratic Party, uh, Jexit, the Jewish um, community moving away from the Democrat Party, 
because the Democratic Party is not what it once was. Now, I am not, I don't like to make generalizations. I, there's wonderful Democratic, liberal minded people who are actually anti violence, anti Antifa, who are for freedom of speech, who are for many of the same values that many of us all share. Um, but unfortunately, we have become so polarized that the moderate voice, my voice, uh, gets lost. And I know that I'm not alone. I am a true moderate. Um, I tend to be fiscally conservative and more socially liberal. I am pro-choice, first trimester. Uh, guns scare me. Um, so I would not at all describe myself as a Republican. I'm right now center, center right leaning. And for many, many good reasons. Now I'm not going to make this a political post, although I'm actually getting more and more motivated to be doing that in the next coming weeks. Cause I feel I have a lot to say on the subject as a psychotherapist, as someone who has been working with men and women for decades. And since my own ending of my marriage, it has created a whole new career where I understand firsthand how marriages succeed and how they fall apart today. And this is why I'm so passionate about working, especially with single individuals, because I want them to have their best foot forward right from the start with what truly makes long-term partnerships successful. It's not a matter of just getting married anymore. It's what does it take for long-term success? And what I have seen over and over again in the divorce groups I run for men and for women is the same thing I see in relationships is playing out today in our politics. So trigger warning here. It's coming. It's coming for those of you. It's, I gave you a warning. There's a trigger warning coming. I have found that you cannot work with someone who gets their strength from their victimhood. When you are empowering the victim, I'm talking about it's, it's a, the inner mentality of the person. Um, you're just enabling that behavior because you want to build someone into strength. You don't want to empower their weakness. And this is what I do as a psychotherapist. I work with forward thinking people. I don't create the space for them to just vent and blame. Although sharing emotion is important and we all have stories of strife and challenge. All of us do. No one is immune. No one is immune. I just FYI, one out of three female children will be sexually abused before she's 18. One out of four. So this statistic is not race related. It's not class related. It is a huge epidemic that I wish more people would be talking about because that's something we can all get behind. So I digress. What I'm saying is we all have stories of trial and tribulation that we must overcome and comparing them doesn't help our story now. So what? Okay. Now what? And as a Jewish person with a family who's had to rebuild themselves again and again with just the clothes on their backs, um, having everything taken away from them, starting all over in foreign countries, uh, and just moving forward. This is what my message is too, that I embody. Um, as some of you saw, I was at the Trump rally in Beverly Hills on Saturday and it was amazing. You know, many of us people who support our president and support our country cannot do so openly. Uh, we cannot put a Trump sign in front of our homes. We cannot put a flag in our car because we risk a window being smashed. We wish we risk a lot of unpleasant things that are happening. Um, and I see this on a regular basis um, with graffiti painted on cars, uh, eggs being thrown at homes. But on Saturday, we can all come together and the, the, the amount of the diversity and love for our country that we experience on Saturday, where you see 
Blacks, Asians, Latinos, Jews, women, Arabs, LGBT. We love our country. We, we back the blue. We support each other. We understand that our country is a country of our patrimony and immigrants. Many of our parents, not just great, 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 great grandparents from the past. Many of our parents have come from countries with socialism and no freedom of religion. So we've been brought up with firsthand accounts of how great we have it here. And oh my God, this is making me emotional. Um, to actually be able to walk the streets of Beverly Hills with my father, who came to this country with just a few hundred dollars um, in his pocket, when there was a lot of anti-Semitism, still. Um, my grandfather on my mom's side actually had to change his name to a less Jewish sounding name from Solomon to Selmer just to get into med school. Um, my, uh, my dad was uh, one of the first Israelis to come to Los Angeles in the 60s. And he is a self-made man. And he says all the time, I'm always grateful and blessed for the opportunities this country has given me. And it was not easy for him. If you knew some of the stories that he had to go through, including having a knife pulled on him because he was doing such a good job in a factory that he was making all the other workers there look bad and they were threatening him to quit. Um, we, all are, we all can tell stories from our parents, from our grandparents, of what they sacrificed for us to be in this country now. I am so proud to be an American, and I am so proud to be able as a woman to speak my voice and to speak my mind. And not, not everyone has to like it. That's why we live in a free country. But we need to protect our amendment for free speech. We need to make sure that censorship is not imbalanced. The media has played a huge role in dividing us. And there is no objectivity anymore. And I, I'm speaking for all cable news networks. There is no whole news network. There is no place for us to really get balanced points of view because to be honest, when we can take from each other's perspectives, we are more likely to get a better solution. It is not left versus right, but that is what our country has become. And the Trump rallies, the amount of enthusiasm across the country, thousands and thousands of people showing up in positivity, in unity, and in love. There is no looting. There is no name-calling. There is no destruction of businesses. Man, we are craving that. We are craving that. Now, again... There's a lot more I could say, believe me, I'm bursting to go and share with you guys my opinions on COVID, my opinions on Trump, my opinions on opening schools, my opinions on foreign policy. Um, if you want to hear from my opinions as a psychotherapist who, um, who walked away and is now more center-right, I will share them. But my main intention for this post is to let you guys know that you are welcome on my page. I, I invite you to contribute to the dialogue, but I implore you to do it respectfully. Once you start name calling, you are not able to be taken seriously, especially coming from the left who's supposed to be tolerant, who's supposed to believe in, 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 in the voice of the underdogs. Um, please practice what you preach. And also, I also do not support people who are, who are all the way on the right. I don't want any bashing of people, um, who are, you know, uh, extreme Trump supporters who also are blinded by their, um, support and can't hear other perspectives. I really believe in all extremes are unhealthy. That's why every religion preaches moderation. Every 
exercise coach preaches, preaches balance and nutritionist preaches balance and moderation. So if you too are a moderate and feel like your voice has been lost, that you're forced to choose sides, I get it. I'm one of you too. Don't be afraid to speak out. Don't be afraid to share your story and make it um, more comfortable to open a dialogue. Because I am all about curiosity over criticism. And if you guys are, a lot of you liberals who are my friends, right? Why are you my friend? Why? Um, have I perhaps earned your respect in some regard? Have we had some commonalities that make our friendship possible? Pull from that perspective. What is making her think that way? I'm curious. I'm curious to understand her points of view. I want to learn more. And perhaps that can open a dialogue for me to understand your point of view. Okay? Curiosity over criticism. This is how we change the world. And with that said, go and vote. And if you can, vote in person. Trump 2020.